Hello and welcome back to Technic SSP Raising a City. I am Gary Reaver. Last time we built the electric substation, which formed the first step in the path to powering our future city, and this time we're building a water tower. This will provide a little bit of power to power our first few buildings. So, I started with the full scaffold blocks again to show where it'll be. I then built them up to reasonable height so that the water tower will stand above the substation and the street which will run alongside it. I then placed the base of jungle wood taken from the jungle around the city. And then built up the sides of the tower leaving a little rim around the bottom. I then replace some of the jungle wood with iron blocks to reinforce the structure and separate the wood out of it. Now that that's built, I can fill it. So I have some water mills, some glass fibre cable and an Evertide amulet. And with these, I can make a fully functioning water tower. So, I place a couple of these. I can then fill this with water like that and then place the first water mills because the water mills work by having a block of water all around them so I can fill the entire tower with water blocks, place them up against the side of this to make sure that it counts it, like that, and then go on to the next level. Got to do it from not flying so I can shift click onto these to make sure that it registers the water above them. And then up another layer and repeat all the way up. Like this. I've got to remember to get them all because if I miss one it'll... It, it may not seem like much but it'll massively reduce the efficiency of my power supply. And the Evertide Amulet is good because it's a free way that means I don't have to keep running off and filling up buckets. It may be expensive to build, but once it's built, it's everything I need it to be. And I'm not going to bother trying to fill in these spaces because they won't co contribute anything to the finished tower. I've gone for 16 water mills, so there's four levels of water mill. It gives the tower a nice height without being too tall. Full kinds of precision work with the Evertide and Vulcanite amulets is best to use the lowest setting so you don't accidentally place water or indeed lava where you don't want it. So there, that's all my water mills. So these produce, I believe it's one EU per block of water around them per tick. So as there's just one side, the side connected to the cable obstructed, that's 5 EU per tick per one, 20 EU per level, four levels. To a nice total of 80 EU per tick. And I'll just cover it up with these to make sure it's all nice and even and then across here so it looks nice as well. And here there's a little bit of water but I don't want to have water directly on top of that so I'm using an additional block of iron to seal it as it were and it matches the water mills pretty well. So that's the internal part of the mill finished. For the roof of my 
water tower. I wanted something that stood out, but also allowed slight view. So I'm using iron covers. to form a thin wall across the top. And for the corners I've got to place one there and then do the facing side, but that's not a big issue. To provide the top for each layer of the roof I'm using glass covers so that you can see in and to give it this nice hidden glass look because of the way that the covers work. You can't see the wooden edges that are touched by another side. So there. And then onto the next layer. And as you can see here there's a bit of a glitch with any kind of micro block on Sfax, or at least this version of Sfax. So they appear as the colourless grass texture. I don't know why this happens, uh, and if anyone knows a fix, please let me know. Finally, here, it's now the very peak of it, and if I put a glass cover in there, it is completely hidden. So there is now glass here, and that caps my water tower. Now the fine little bit. To take the power from here, I'll feed it along this way. So it seems to be supported. And it's going into these two here. So it's in line with this. So and I'll zigzag it down this way a little bit and then across one more. Now I'll have it at the underside, like that. And so that connects up. I can go in here. And this is now generating EU. And by the time I do the next one, this will be a lot more full. And we'll be able to power the first building. There's a bit of water dripping from here. And there is this hole here which I'd like to cover. So I'll see if I've got enough. Another thought is to use the CF sprayer, but I'm very worried about it spraying up and getting into the water there. So I'm going to have to try it and hope that it doesn't do that. Ah. Let's see, there it's gone in with the cable is. But now I'd better go in and have a quick look. I also damaged the scaffold there. Just the bottom one, but that is not a problem. Check all the way around. Okay, I shall spray that. Grey, or colour it grey rather, when it's done. Also knocked out this scaffold here, so I'll just replace that. It's dripping, but I like it. I think it adds to the the look of it and gives it a little bit of authenticity. Make it makes it seem like it's not completely brand new. It it has been here for a while and it does have some leaks, but not enough to cause alarm or to interrupt the power. Mm.